Hey, it's Steve with Entering Into Space. Welcome back to the backyard and the beast. Yeah, so what have I done to the beast? I've done some major upgrades. These, these uh, mass-produced Newtonians, I mean, they're super cheap. Well, when I say cheap, they're like under $1,000. But again, like in my previous video, you get what you pay for. So two things that um, I think really help uh, as far as upgrades on this is the focuser. And lo and behold, I got a, an email from a company, Ruse, R-U-Z, Astro. If I'm not pronouncing your name right, uh, sue me. Can you? I don't think so. Uh, anyway, they reached out and they were like, hey, we make all kinds of accessories for Astro, including rings for telescopes. They were like, hey, we'd like to send you some rings uh, and see what you think. Give us a review. So I said, sure. They were like, well, what telescope do you have? And I'm like, I've got this gigantic telescope, 300 millimeters. So basically their response was, wow, those are really big and kind of custom made. Do you have a smaller scope? And I said, yeah, but it's pretty solid. I mean, the rings on this scope you saw in one of my previous videos wouldn't even hold the, the OTA that slipped. So I had to put the padding in there. Um, so finally they came back and said, you know what? By God, we're going to send you some rings. We're going to send you three and we're going to send you an adapter for the ASI Air, which they did. Uh, it took about a week to get them. And let me tell you something, major difference, major difference. And uh, what was the other thing? Oh yeah, the focuser. I, uh, I had a lot of problems running the 2600 mm with an off-axis guider and a filter wheel with the stock focuser because it would slip. The focuser was like, there is a, th you know, it's, I can't. So a lot of problems with that. I ended up having to ditch the OAG, put on a guide scope, which isn't the best and still was struggling. And uh, so finally I broke down and for Christmas present, to me, I bought a Moonlight Focuser. Uh, and wow, what a world of difference. Now, I did have to do some drilling of the OTA. I had to use a, a stepper bit um, and widen each one of the holes because if I was to drill the offset, then I could get off. So widening the holes allowed the focuser to stay centered over the secondary mirror and uh, works out great. And absolutely no issues whatsoever. Nice V curves every time, extremely reliable and made a huge difference in collimation as well. Um, holds collimation really good uh, and holds focus really well through the night. So yeah, it was almost as much as the scope itself, but definitely made a huge improvement and took one less, you know, I got 99 problems. One of them used to be my focuser. Now I don't have that anymore. So let's take you on a little rundown of what I did, uh, replacing the rings. It wasn't too tremendously hard, but there was quite a bit involved in making sure we get all the rings set up and the ASI are remounted on there. I'll take you through kind of step-by-step step what I did. Sorry about the camera rotation in advance, but anyway. So everything came prepackaged pretty well. Opening up the box, we see the Ruse Rouse Astro. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but you know, I'm pretty close. And I think these rings are like a carbon fiber uh, and then machined rings. And they're a double knuckle ring, so they have two different joints in each ring. They did send some bolts for mounting the hardware to, and this is the top dovetail plate that mounts, uh, does not, it's not for mounting the rings to the tripod or to the mount. It's actually to connect the top of the rings. So you can see I've got one, two, and three rings, which is pretty awesome. And this is the uh, ASI Air spring-loaded dovetail mount. Now the old rings, you can see they're like pop metal, really weak, just two of them. They are mounted to the Lozmandy bar, which it didn't come with. It came with that top bar up there, but I actually put them on the Lozmandy bar to make it just a little bit stiffer, but lots of flexure in those rings. Uh, it's just way too much for astrophotography. 
you can see how much they flex back and forth. So disconnecting everything, I had the uh, ASI side mounted. I uh, had to drill into that ring to get that little clip or the shoe to bolt onto that. And I got a mess of wires. Cable management is it's a fine art and something I strive to do. So pulling the camera, I had the ASI 533 on there uh, with a uh, off-axis guider and it was still tough for that old stock focuser. So the new Moonlight Focuser, I had to mount the um, EAF to the tension spring ring or tension knob. Uh, doesn't seem to affect operations. Everything's super smooth, really tight. There may be a little bit of light leak I still have to work on where the base of the focuser meets the OTA. But all in all, uh, it fit up really well. And if you want to know what focuser I used, uh, I'll leave a link in the description to exactly which one. So pulling off that top dovetail plate, I just had that so I could mount a scope or just something to grab a hold of since this, uh, since the OTA is so heavy. And these are the pads that I had to put on there to keep uh, the rings, uh, to keep the OTA from slipping because the rings just would not grab it well enough. So just some, just some padding for carpet. So first thing now I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull off the uh, Lowe's Mandy and the rings and get them over to the table. And get these old rings off. I just had them on with one screw. It's about all I could figure out. Um, but now that I've got them off, I can clean this dovetail up by Apertura. It's been great. And here's the new rings. I'm gonna put them uh, upside down for now. I think, or actually right side up. Yeah, right side up. Haha, <laughs> look, I don't even know which way I'm doing it. There you go. Get it right, Steve. So getting all the rings lined up, only two of these rings are going to connect with that top carbon fiber dovetail plate. Uh, the third ring on the front side I've decided would be separate. So these screws, these little pan head screws are already in there and they are going to be used to mount the, the supplied carbon fiber dovetail plate. So you can see it took me just a second or two to realize that I had it upside down. <clears throat> these screws weren't long enough. So I was like, oh, so yeah. Flipping it upside down makes way more sense because now the ASI or bracket will connect to that. And when you're putting stuff together like this, you don't want to fully tighten each screw. You want to get everything kind of loose. And when you get everything assembled, then go back through and tighten everything up. So now I'm mounting the Lowe's Mandy dovetail plate to the bottom use the outside screw holes. I'm using the screws that are provided, the Allen key, Allen head screws that are provided with the rings. So I've got the whole thing mounted back on the Ioptron CEM70 and get it ready to open up all the rings so I can put the OTA on. So with it on, I get it just eyeball balanced. And uh, I tell you what, only just even putting one of these rings on just holds it tight. It's so much nicer, you can see. And having that double knuckle really helps get everything fit snug around there. I had to provide Ruse and Astro uh, several dimensions before they could make these rings for me, but it worked out really well. So that's pretty much everything here. You know, the last thing is to try to get this thing in some sort of rotational balance. Um, then once I've done that, rotating it just slightly, then I can go ahead and tighten up the rings.
And last but not least, that last ring on the front side, now that I can slide this whole thing forward, I can get that the last set of screws tightened up on the front ring. So this is the spring-loaded um, ASI Air holder. So I've got to take the shoe completely off to store it. I will keep the screws because I will reuse those to mount the bracket to the ASI Air. And like I said, I left that loose so I can slide that whole plate back and forth to my liking. And uh, I think I pretty well just centered it up tighten it down and then this little guy slides right up and it provide they have the provided thumb screw on the left hand side there to just tighten it right down super clean i really like this setup and that's pretty much it everything's mounted everything's balanced i really like the setup the rings are awesome thank you rose astro for sending those out i highly recommend those if you're buying a Skywatcher or an Orion or an Apertura Newtonian, large Newtonian, you know, 12 inch, 10 inch Newtonian. I highly recommend upgrading the rings. I didn't get the price of these rings, but uh, I think they said that even though these were kind of custom built, they probably retailed for right around $400. It's an investment, just like that Focuser, but you know, if you're going to be out there depending on all your gear to get, to get you some quality images. You definitely want to have the best you can. And all the cables are run. Everything's run real nice and tight. I've got these sleeves from Amazon, just kind of bundling the wires together. Um, everything's very balanced. And maybe these three rings also help with collimation. There's not as much warpage as there was before from temperature because I've, every time I go to collimate, it's usually dead on. Whereas before I would have to collimate almost every time I took the OTA out and put it on the mount. So I appreciate you guys watching, checking out some of the upgrades I've done. At the end of this video, I'm gonna show you some images that I've captured here recently. Uh, Boogeyman Nebula, M45, and some other really cool images. I can't think off the top of my head. You know, you know I put the cool music in the images at the end. Um, but yeah, really appreciate you guys. Uh, sticking around and uh here's to 2025 and oh yeah what do i always say clear skies clear minds thanks for watching <laughs>